Welcome back, everybody. Unite Mike's Mayhem Week 3 rolls on finals time. TTV dispatching Spinal 2-0. Dark Aura dispatching Radiance 2-0 in all, which all were very close games, by the way. Like, yeah. this has been the razor thinnest of margins mm -hmm. uh, for Unite Mike's Mayhem that we've had across both sides of the bracket. So I'm hoping that the finals lives up to the hype. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody in chat at the start of this, you hit exclamation mark teams was already saying this is an incredibly stacked night. So mm -hmm. a lot of amazing teams. We only got two left, TTV and Dark Aura. TTV playing a great game, just classic TTV television that we saw in the previous match. Uh, we expect and know and love from them. Dark Aura, though, taking an upset victory against Radiance, but they looked amazing doing it. Mm -hmm. Some great potential, um, great potential, but just great pop off from from Yoshi specifically, uh, yep. two secures on Rayquaza back after, uh, you know, back to back in that match. So loved that from them. And they got to do it again versus another mm -hmm. Titan in the North America scene. They got to do it against TTV now. Yeah. And these teams are not only fighting for that $100 prize in this uh, pick band format that we've mm -hmm. got here at Unite Mike's Mayhem. The winner of this meets in our winner's final, which is tomorrow night. And in that, uh, ironically enough, we said how stacked tonight is. They're, whoever makes it out of this night is going to be the only team that hasn't qualified for the Unite Championship Series <laughs> last season that's going to be in the finals. So we've got huge, 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 huge artillery in the in the in the bank for tomorrow. Sure. And one of these teams is just vying for their chance to scrap it up with some of the best. Yeah, I mean, Ascended is waiting there tomorrow. Uh, uh, she's, as we saw, in our week number one, and then mm -hmm. Clash as our week number two. It's going to be a great game. Lots of different play styles are going to be clashing there, so a lot of fun to look forward to. And remember, I just put it in the chat, but anyone wants to do exclamation mark prize pool, if you want to help support Competitive Unite, any donations you make to that GoFundMe are going directly to the prize pool, so all of that's going back to the players, obviously. So if you mm -hmm. want to help out with that, it's a great way to do so. Being said, though, we have this NAS game. We need to do one more coin flip, and I'm going to say that TTV is going to be heads and Dark Aura is going to be tails. Let's see who has the option between first and second ban. Coin is being flipped. I'm waiting for it to land, and it is tails. Oh, changing it up with the coin tonight. I like it. That means Dark Aura has the um, has choice of first or second ban. For those at home that are just joining and aren't sure how our pick ban uh, format works here, it'll be uh, one the first ban, the second ban, mm -hmm. and then one pick, and then the next team will choose two, and then two, two, one, one, or two, one, whatever. You get it. Once, get once, it. once, <laughs> once we hit two, it goes back and forth two until we get to the finish line you all get it you you know you guys are smart you you're, you so you awesome. understand mm -hmm. just because i don't doesn't mean you all won't uh and i believe in all of you the fattest brains in the <laughs> galaxy are in this chat today no question very true yes uh our chat is very five head big fans um all right ttv is actually gets the spot for team a they're gonna get first band dark aura actually choosing to go into that second slot so ttv starting off our pick ban phase by banning away blissey and now dark aura is gonna have their chance of ban and yes it has been their perma ban all night long it is gonna be mm -hmm. sableye three times in a row for this team well, throw, to, throw up the Sableye, and I believe in it. Uh, that's why I always say, in my opinion, right now, the best pick is the first pick, and TTV wasting no time taking mm -hmm. the Dodrio. We're going to get some of that Lutano three-head bird action. It's absolutely ridiculous. We've talked about a few Pokemon throughout Unite's history. It's just great Swiss Army Knife-style plays. Uh, just a Pokemon that can fit into the central area, can do some work in either path, and even be an invasion tool. Um, Decidueye, Decidui, not really one of those. Aegislash, maybe one of the most notorious. Blastoise as well, filling a couple of those shoes. But it seems like Dodrio's time to shine in this current metagame. They're picking that one. Dark Aura is going to respond with a pick of Snorlax and a pick of Mr. Mon. Another double tank selection here on the side of Dark Aura, but this time taking two tanks that they know TTV loves to play. Not only taking out picks from under TTV, but very uh, reasonable response picks to the Dodrio. Uh, 
a, a calculated Snorlax Heavy Slam or Block can really uh, put the shackles on a Dodrio, just drive down its sprint meter, uh, but TTV wasting no time picking up the Azumarill and the Mamoswine. Swine. Mamoswine. Swine. Uh, just a Pokemon after my own heart. <laughs> I've played so much Mamoswine Swine uh, since um, I got to watch Yauto play <laughs> for it. Was it Cheese? Was it Cheese yeah. Week One? Yeah. I've just been all about the Mamoswine Swine uh, and TTV seeing that high horsepower, that high octane Pokemon, putting it in the front seat with an Azumarill, gonna buy tons of real estate for Lutano to scamper around the map. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're gonna do that. You're also gonna have a great tool to split apart Dark Aura's front line, right? The high horsepower is an amazing scissor like tool that can really split apart teams, uh, which has been one of the strong, uh, strongest factors that Dark Aura has brought in game after game. The tank line from Dark Aura between Bury and Oh, I can't remember the G. I can't remember the mind player on on their team. Um, but actually, has been so so good for them. Uh, so having Mammoth Swine to try to pick that apart a little bit going to be a good weapon in the tool belt for TTV. Dark Aura returning with a couple of picks though. Age Slash being selected. Yep. Yeah, I want to guess the next one. Oh uh, no, you're putting me on the button. Nah, it's I'm okay. It's it. Pikachu. I, I <laughs> not that one, but yes, Aegis Slash and Pikachu seems to be two more perma picks for Dark Aura, and it really all comes down for Get Yoshi. What Pokemon are they going to get their hands on for the final selection? TTV has a few options here. Dodrio already being selected and Azumarill already being selected lead me to believe that the selections for Retsu and, Lu and Lutano are already locked up. So now you have Zugrugs probably picking up the Mammoth Swine. What does Otter get to play? As well as why? Why? You know, they're just they're just gonna keep that cheese train going. Uh, sure. You know, they're they're like an ice cream truck. You hear the song playing, you know what they're showing up with. Come on, mm -hmm. uh, give Galadite. me a Choco Taco. You, bring it back. <laughs> bring back the Choco Taco. You absolute swine what an amazing <laughs> product that was and i can't believe it's gone anyways ttv a9 and uh you know whatever uh ender might come through with something like Ooh. a hoopa maybe uh, um something like an eldegoss throw some shades of uh days old well you are correct eldegoss is the selection for ttv the giant cranium on that pokemon is locked in as well as all of the night tales as well as Alolan Ninetales, is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. I see, I see. Okay. So the old snacks isn't that far off. Dark Aura, you get your you get your pick here. I did like Yoshi's uh, Delphox, which might not be awful uh, into the face of the rest of the squad. <laughs> now Delphox is kind of like antithesis to Dodrio, so maybe it's something along the lines of uh, uh, Decidueye again. Um, Dark Aura has some pretty good options. Cinderace, good one. You know that kind of splits the range actually between. Um, uh, uh, your Decidueye and your Delphox is a little bit more uh, able to, I think, uh, outlast a Dodrio if a Dodrio finds its way to the back line. Um, so there you go. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm hoping Get Yoshi is on that Cinderace. Uh, and they're going to be looking to do some damage into these paths. I think Cinderace is a great answer into Dodrio. Like you were you're just mentioning, Blaze Kick is a really good uh, stun tool for the Dodrio, as well as a escape tool for uh, Get Yoshi. Also, a great Cinderace player. Uh, doing a little bit of prep for those seven-star raids coming this weekend. Don't forget, everybody, new seven-star raids, Cinderace coming into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, check out the Pokemon podcast, uh, Super Effective, to learn all you need to know about how to prepare for that raid. Anyways... Um, uh, Cinderace headed into game. Not sponsored. Let's look not, at, not, not sponsored, sponsored plug. Yeah, that's true. Not sponsored plug. Not sponsored plug. <laughs> so no Voltage, free shout of course. Outs, my bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Voltage is going to be on that Pikachu, of course. Yoshi going to be picking up the Cinderace. Malinaki, Aegislash, Barry, who has been in that tank roll, and Galadite, uh, who was, did great work on the mime. You mentioned it before, and it's worth shouting out again. Otter, sure. Lutano on Dodrio, Retsu on Azumarill, going to be taking that to the top pass. Zugrog on Mamoswine, Ender, like I said, on the old school Eldegoss. We run it down. And I know we're saying tongue-in-cheek A9 Otter, uh, but there's a reason that they keep choosing that Pokemon. True. And it's not just because it's a fun Pokemon to play for them or that they really enjoy it. They're doing damage out oh, here yeah. in the Thea Sky Ruins. Like, they are making their mark known, and they're leaving it all over the map. So it makes sense that it's, since it's such an understated pick for any other team that they always get it for free, they can choose it late, they can focus otherwise uh, in other spaces, and always know they're going to end up with something of quality value to put in Otter's hands. 
That's true. And I mean, much more important than me underrating the Alolan Ninetales, we just gotta make sure that Dark Aura do not underestimate the Alolan Ninetales. We saw in that last match from TTV in their second game of their first match, the A9 really popping off, slowing down so many Pokemon from trying to escape the hands of TTV in that final team fight, sliding their direction was a lot on the back of Otter, especially in the early moments of that one. So do not underestimate TTV, but of course, do not underestimate that alone the nine tails without a doubt and i saw real quick in the chat are they using emblems no we are not no oh, yeah. not using emblems on mm -hmm. uh in this tournament here dark yes. aura giving us the same look that we've seen uh before here two one two with yoshi taking that central I've asked the teams before if they want to play with emblems, and every single time it has been a resounding no. So one day if the teams are ever like, yeah, let's mess around with it a little bit. We have the technology, we could do it, but one day we'll have to give it a shot. Retsu already at level three, this score of eight. If they can get it against Burry, should get them the evolution? Not quite. Almost at that point, but still Azumarill wants those stacks and they want them early. Yeah, Malinaki on their hand, they're getting their stacks in as well. Ender is doing their best. Ooh. Chip shots here. Zogrog is solo. Can Galadite <laughs> clap on it? Yes, they can. Them big foam hands come out from the mime Pokemon, and they get that KO in short order. Volder's going to try and take this in DDD out from under Otter, as Otter's already level 4 and cruising towards level 5. <laughs> X speed, uh, definitely a good investment of doing so if you get a chance to KO Zogrog early, especially when they're just on a swine up. The longer you can keep them at that Pokemon and keep them away from the giant mass that is going to become their future you want to do so look at that just lutano poaching all the birds to their side of the map <laughs> zagrog doing their job and just being a complete distraction voltage doing tons of damage there molly naki was 16 and pocket's going to be tough to score as those double swords are on the retreat but here comes lutano <laughs> they're going to be a menace was that the drill peck it Coming is through, getting that ko with the big push come on it has actually kind of become the flavor of the week high jump kick drill peck seems to be the move for dodrio Burry tries to chase down but great supportive play by ender to prevent that route from being taken Taken, stops debris in their tracks. I keep saying debris. Stops debris in their tracks and blocks the uh, blocks the escape route. Well, there you go. Ender throwing a little leaf tornado out to boost the speed of Retsu on the retreat is there. Uh, I believe whirlpooling around, if I saw that right. Galadite engaging on Ender. Here comes Burry, chips them up. Otter just going to deal tons of damage in the face of Dark Aura. Get some birds from the cells as Malinaki tries to get a crop as well. Otter still pushing right above uh, half HP. Retsu finding their way on the backside. Malinaki looking to engage. They want the fight. Yes. Electro Ball from Voltage comes through, seals the deal, and they Electro Web down Otter. Can they convert on that? Electro Ball comes through, but they might have overstayed their welcome as now Otter says, mm -mm -mm, we eat mice tonight. KO streak of three and Tana with Zogrog on the mine. And just another example of how well Aura Veil plays currently. Pikachu does not have a huge damage output normally, but even then, the Aura Veil blocking essentially everything they tried to pull off there. So, a great use of that cooldown by Otter to block out any damage. Brew with a big knockup, tries to get a lot of his cure. Zogrog on the Icicle Crash is going to be a threat to anyone who wants to enter within the radius of that Unite move. Or not Unite move, that move. Well, Burry doing their best Wily e. Coyote impression as the Roadrunner just left them in the dust and stamped them into the road, no question. TTV's Lutano heating up, already level 8, and they're all over the map. Look at them just jockeying around trying to keep their sprint gauge up as they go for the high jump kick to misses. Drill Peck engage was pretty good, though. Zagrog able to close the door on the mine. They're finding Burry. Electro Ball goes wide, finds Lutano. They're on the retreat. They're too fast. Can the Cinderace cut them off? That's the big question. Snorlax seals the Reg Ice up, and now they're going to be able to push with that if they want. Malinaki looking for the engage, and they get it on Zagrog. Now Ender's half HP. Otter's pretty stocked up, though. This might be an opportunity. Volt Tackle comes through, shreds up in her. Heavy Slam misses just wide Ray Finkel. And now Otter's pushing back through as Molly Naki's looking for the engage. All the points are going to go in for Dark Or. They're looking pretty good. Molly Naki cutting off Lutano from getting to the squad as they got a. Uh, I, I thought they were going to get a bunch of points in, <laughs> but it looks like they saw the pressure was mounting too high and they peel back into their Cinderace to see if they could do any damage that way. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't take that fight. Definitely because Yoshi had the Blazing Bicycle Kick. Their Unite move is ready, primed, and to go. Lutano's going to get at least one of their scores in. Make it two. Looks for the third, but I think the Mr. Mind preventing anything like that from happening. Retsu locked in place by both Volt Tackle and Block and Wide Guard. But the Unite move is going to send them right back into the fray. But a little bit of a Water Pulse gives them the escape tool. 
Yeah, I thought they were going to peel back onto the birds there, but uh, think against it. They just retreat as Ender's there to pick up Retsu. No, they didn't get any of the birds, but they did escape with their lives, not giving any KOs back into Dark War. And here comes Lutano. Sprint Gage is up. We're going to start drills pecking through the birds as we've got a little bit of a kerfuffle happening in the bottom pass. Retsu getting engaged on by everyone under the sun. Can they close the door? Finally, Burry with that meaty heavy slam coming down, closing the deal. And this is the center point of Dark War strategy. They've shown it to us again and again. It's just every Everybody dive on this one target. Utilize their great focus fire and count on that. The problem is knockouts are happening. It's keeping them up in the experience race. Not quite overtaking TTV. Definitely not that. But, you know, staying alive. However, the points are just not coming at all. 170 points for TTV so far. Dark Aura hasn't found a way to crack open the final barrier of TTV's defense. Yeah, they're kind of, they're, they're taking the body well, but not really finding any value out of it, unfortunately. Certainly not on the scoreboard, and they're still behind, as you mentioned, the experience share. There is some wild Pokemon on the Dark Horse side of the map. Looks like they're going to contend with this basement. Reggie, but Zugrug's playing really far forward, and Otter's just waiting in the weeds. They go for it. Heavy Slam comes through on Zugrug. Zugrug's trying to find their way out. They're getting CC'd to... Uh, just he double hockey sticks in back they're trying to find their way in eldegoss comes through and they caught and crash on top of the mammoth swine to try and buy them some time but no ender goes down azumarill goes down lutano goes down and it's just otter trying to hold it and that's a e-speed block right there buying time into the face of otter they get stamped out and dark aura finally breaking those gates open they're gonna get a basement reggie if they want it and they certainly took that goal zone I don't know. I, that was a KO streak of three from Otter. So they went down, but they went down by taking three of them with them. So that means that Dark Aura just does not have the firepower for this basement Reggie at all. At least not in time for TTV to come back. So Grub does discover the Snorlax. They're hiding with them in the bush. Gets one auto attack, but not quite enough to get the knockout. Reggie Rock brought down and another oh, steal. Oh. Burry TV on the Snorlax. Heavy slam again and again. That is two basement Reggies, folks. Count them at home. That's two. Yeah, I mean, they did a 5 for 3 swap there. They got the goal zone, and when you know Burry's just hiding out, locked and loaded, ready to go with the heavy slam of the century, why worry about it? Mm -hmm. Dark Aura getting it done here. Molly Naki just babysitting upstairs saying, we'll take the Regilecki too. And now I really want Dark Aura to peel onto their wild Pokemon. They don't have that much, but they oh, do have some. Well, Unite move comes out, and they hunt down Lutano. You love to see it. Indy getting chunked as well. Great play by Voltage, and that Pikachu Unite is so quick to recharge. They're going to have that back in time. I cannot say this enough, folks. Pull the trigger on that Unite move. So many teams, when they go up against, you know, more storied, more known teams like TTV, you can start to play nervous. You can start to play scared. Voltage does such a good job there. Pulls the trigger on that Unite, knows they have the capability to knock out Dodrio, and takes it. Yeah, they're only hitting that level 11 right now, but seriously, they're in such a better position after doing so. Amazing, amazing play by Voltage. Yeah, that might have been a two-level swing for Voltage there. I yeah. believe they were nine or ten, maybe. But they were able to jump right back to level parity with that Dodrio. You love to see it. Miley Naki has been moving around this map really, really well. Not really with the team, but always doing some damage here. And that score lead has shrunk 170 to 91 as well. Dark Aura looking good to close this thing out in similar fashion like they did against Radiance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Ender right now. <laughs> ah, yes. Two Pokemon diverged in a tall grass. Well, Zugrug is going to interrupt that one with a block trying to keep Burry away from any kind of crowd control abilities. Dazzling Gleam does get one stun, prevents Snorlax from entering in, and Aurorville keeps the chase up as Otter really is making a case for this Alola Ninetales. One KO streak of three is not enough. Yeah, Molly Naki's on the hunt, though. Big wide guard. They're trying to find some purchase. One player goes down. That's Indy. They're trying to... Ender, excuse me. They're trying to move forward. Oh, it's voltage heating up. Q streak of two, but Otter back uh -oh. the other way. It's three on two here, and they're going to look for the huge engage as Lutano is darting through the whole squad. Four players down for Dark Aura. It's going to be a five-pack. Ten, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. That's all five. Dark Aura is down. Rayquaza is free, and it's Otter. And it's Lutano doing work into the middle here. That Rayquaza is getting low, and Malinaki is not going to make it in time. I don't think Indy getting credit for it. Duck it time. And also, oh. burgers on the menu. Holy Lutano, that was ridiculous. Carves through the enemy team. Unite move there to get around the Snorlax block. Just a tech with the Dodrio Unite move. Also finds themselves a KO onto the Mr. Mime. Huge play from them, and now 424 to 91. Dark Aura had that game in its clutches until Lutano came and smacked their hand away. Well, that's the thing, right? Uh, TTV somehow managed to get Dark Aura to engage and they were the ones face-checking as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you saw 
you saw the pickup there. Yes, Zugrug face checked into the Snorlax, but what happened? The Snorlax went for the engage, and then Zugrug peeled back, Otter came out, double buffed, and then the Leaf Tornado came down to help, help Zugrug get out of the mix. And then it was just on after that, but TTV had the impetus. Here we go. Tons of Unite moves coming out. TTV's trying to hold this goal zone. Voltage trying to score. 42 going in. There's still 27 left, and can they convert on Lutano? Lutano's so low. That's a KO. Two players down for TTV. There's still 20 seconds left. We're going for a ton of points. Zugrug's going to try and stop this. No, Hundo Burger goes in. 626 to 235. I just don't think there's enough energy on the planet to get Dark War back into this one, <laughs> and certainly not enough time as TTV is going to take themselves a game one in very convincing fashion well you definitely got a galaxy quest it right you never give up you never surrender it's only a 10 minute match for crying out loud still though ttv is gonna win this one one to zero a great break down to that final fight two snacks you're absolutely right ttv not exactly a bait but just playing into dark order strategy knowing that they're gonna want to collapse and use all their unite moves in one big gigantic swing take some knockouts but if you're only knocking out the tanks who are meant to soak up that damage it gives the room for dodrio and alola nine tails to do work from range well dodrio kind of from range depends on how you uh describe a rubber band uh but all the nine tails from range and dodrio with that in and out strat gets them the first game win ttv starts this one hot hot is an understatement right there and what's really sticking out to me is yoshi kept to 32k damage on the cinderace mm -hmm. they yeah. could not get it going and despite amazing play by voltage bury malinaki and galadite they just could not get yoshi involved and ultimately that that was part of the equation that they're missing to be able to convert onto ttv and take those big team wipes that they needed there you go well, that's only game number one. I know. The action does not stop here at Unite's Mike's Mayhem, but that means that we are headed back to another mm -hmm. draft phase. So, Dark Aura has been going with the strategy of banning Sableye every single game. However, Lutano just ran amok all over them. Yes, the A9 popped off with a 3 KO streak snow globe. It was sick, yes, but Dodrio was the one that was absolutely going off. <laughs> against your own team do you ban this dodrio or do you stick to your guns and keep the sableye out of your game i'd like to think that they're going to try and it's i think it's an easier puzzle to figure figure out dodrio than it is sableye mm. my my two cents um i'm still banning sableye if i'm in dark horse position here um and i'm going to try and be a little bit more conscious to the drill pre uh, uh, drill peck uh high jump dodrio mm -hmm. and see how we can kind of build our composition around that now after the snorlax there wasn't a lot of ways to kind of beat the brakes off this dodrio slow it down so you could get some uh, some nets on it maybe that's a, a you know voltage is going to go with pikachu again maybe we go into thunder uh thunderbolt range for that sure. and just hope you hope you get to lock it down in that sense yeah, yeah, that is very true. I mean, Voltac Electro Ball's gotta be there to lock up the Dodrio, right? But it ended up going towards the tanks quite a few times, so I don't know. Yeah, you definitely have something there. Well, we have the decision from Dark Aura. They are gonna be banning first this time around, taking that mm -hmm. within the reins, and they are gonna ban away the Blissey uh, for game number one. Yep, and that makes sense. When you're banning first, you put the other team on banning Sableye or you get Sableye. So mm -hmm. um, if Dark Aura has a reasonable Sable Sableye player and TTV leaves it up to them, then uh, there you go. You got yourself a, a Ghost Goblin. <laughs> yeah, you get yourself a Ghost Goblin. The second overall. All right, to quote Ender directly from our chat, with the second overall pick, Team TTV has selected Sableye ban. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be waiting Dark Aura's first selection in our Game 2 draft. Uh, so I'm excited to see where they go. But yes, Blissey and Sableye being banned out here. It's not much surprise, except for the fact that we just saw Dojo go absolutely crazy last game. That being said, Dark Aura has the opportunity to pick Dodrio. But, mm -hmm. I mean, Dodrio is not a just pick the Pokemon and win kind of Pokemon, though, right? This is a Pokemon you need to know and love to have the skill to be able to play. I mean, it's skill or just amount of reps you have with this Pokemon in rank. Trust me, Lutano, no life this Pokemon upon release. So they have many, many reps on it. They're going to have a chance to pick it again, though, because Dark Aura has selected Snorlax as their first Pokemon.
Okay. So, uh, unless TTV is really just trying to flex into other comps and practice other things, I mean, come on. Take the Dodrio. Take the take your bookends, right? Dodrio A9. <laughs> those are your bookends. Fill it with some some fiction in the middle, and, and it's that <laughs> step on a Theos guy ruins. Uh, give Dark War the chance to steal the Alola Nine Tails. Do it, you won't. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. TTV does have two picks in a row, though. You're right. I imagine Dodrio is a pretty solid lock. Uh, so Nox being gone would also make me inclined to pick a Mr. Mime here for TTV as their secondary pick, but they have shown some favoritism to Azumarill early on in the draft. I don't really expect uh, Dark War to go to Azumarill. Um, right. They've been permanent. I don't know if T. Much, I... right? Yeah, I don't know if TTV has their finger on the pulse to figure that out. So maybe TTV goes something Dodrio, Mama Swine, and then move on from there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how much they like playing Mama Swine. It's not really something I've thought about too much. But they are. You are correct. They are going to be selecting it. Uh, if we didn't know any better, I'd say this is an ice lane. We got a Loma Nine Tails and Mama Swine picked out the gate. These absolute grief stars. They know. <laughs> they know they get a nine for free. They yep. know they get A9 for free, and they're just putting it up, and they're letting Dark Aura kind of play. They're they're letting Dark Aura play their cards out wrong is essentially what TTV is doing right now, right? <laughs> that is true. Um, that is true. The other side of the coin, though, is Dark Aura probably knows these selections are coming in anyways. So now TTV can kind of hide their cards a little bit of what they want to be picking as surprises in this game. Um, so they get to see the next two picks from Dark Aura before they make any commitments to new picks. But you're right. It could be just Grief Star play from DTV. <laughs> no, I mean, there's there's certainly a method to the madness. And whether you say it's TTV concealing their cards or they're trying to get Dark Aura to misplay theirs, um, I think it kind of bends in the same direction for what they're trying to do. I love this. Give me some, give, give me some Urshifu action. Mr. Mime, Urshifu. Talk about Dark Aura saying, okay, we'll throw you a curveball right back, TTV. <laughs> um, we're taking the Mime. We're taking Urshifu. And TTV now has the opportunity to go, okay, is this another Dodrio engagement situation? Is that we're going to go with here? No. Or are we going to go to like Gardevoir or something like that? Urshifu is exciting to me. We got the Ip Man Pokemon itself. I'm very excited. Uh, I like both of these builds. They're a lot of fun to watch. I haven't got too much of an opportunity to cast this Pokemon, so I am excited to see uh, how it's played out so far. I assume Malineki is going to be playing this Pokemon and dropping the Aegislash for the second game. Um, at, at least that's my assumption. In doing so, I'm excited to see how their entire composition is going to play differently. Now you lend yourself a little bit more of that burst damage instead of a, having yet another stun that Aegislash was giving them in wide guard without a doubt I mean it's <laughs> and this might be I'm kind of reading in chat as things are going through uh it sounds like Malinaki has a dodrio uh okay. on the in the in the holster here so if Dark Aura gets dodrio if TTV doesn't take it kind of right here Dark Aura has the opportunity to seal it up for themselves and look at that we feed and uh, the question is I guess Ender's going to be on Wigglytuff, right? Roll out As Wiggly, probably. Yeah, that is my assumption. <laughs> um, and Listen, Retsu on Lucario, sure. Why not? Yeah. I, okay. If you are going to play Sing, though, if you do play S Sing, Otter is going to be killing it. We have some sleep effects where special attack damage gets to go absolutely wild. That could be huge. But yeah, this is a. Uh, if they go sing, the crowd control TTV has is absurd. <laughs> like, through the roof, right? We have A9 and Mamo freezes, Wigglytuff sleeps, Dark Aura is just going to have a terrible time trying to even move. Yeah, and there's n there's no real Pokemon that they can pick up that'll cleanse that off, so that it kind of forces the whole squad of Dark Aura to go into the recently nerfed full heal. So, mm -hmm. uh, not a bad look by TTV here, just going with the crowd control angle. Uh, just... Heavy suppression status effects. Dark Aura going to take the Pikachu. And is the Dodrio the last one? If it is, TTV. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like that one. Yes, we have Yoshi selecting yet another Pokemon. Yoshi will not play the same Pokemon more than once in one of my tournaments. I will have you know. <laughs> they will play a new Pokemon every single game. Duraludon, the fourth one they've showcased tonight. 
Yeah, well, uh, Yoshi uh, firing up the sentient asthma inhaler. Going to see if they can <laughs> give a breath of fresh air to Dark Aura's TTV. is going to take Gardevoir and uh, see seeing Nightmare uh, sits for them on the other side of the map here. Dark Aura <laughs> better strap up with some full heels and a good way to get out of nonsense because they are going to get stunned down and locked down. Yes, could not agree more. All right, just getting our uh, observing feed ready. We should be good to go. Players are ready. Reminder of where we are at. TTV is up 1-0. to zero. This is the finals of this evening. Of course, the winner of this earning $100, but also getting the invite to tomorrow's grand finals of Season 2 event. Very excited to get that match underway obviously and uh one last little bit of housekeeping before we head into the game don't forget the overdunk podcast is going to be recording live on this channel immediately after this tournament so do not go anywhere if you want to hear us talk about all things ucs for season two yeah uh that's a huge announcement that happened uh just a mere days just mere days ago that yeah. we want to cover it's going to be me you lazadin and ender uh actually a player in this event right now right. the support <laughs> player for ttv so that's going to be in short order after this tournament is over don't go anywhere but right now we've got ttv versus dark aura in our unite mike's mayhem week three finals ttv up one <laughs> Yeah, TTV up 1-0. I think I have the score line right on the screen, right? Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah, oh, yeah, it's, awesome. it's, all, it's all lined up. It's all they lined switch up. switch sides. All right, Urshifu move items. We have attack weight, weakness policy, and the razor claw. So a lot of tools to give you a good amount of burst damage. I like that a lot. Retsu rocking the potion with their kit, as well as mm -hmm. attack weight, muscle band, focus band. I think the uh, held items are pretty standard across the board for them. Excited to see Yoshi with a Scarf Duraludon, though. Auto-attacking is this Pokemon's middle name. Without a doubt. Real quick, uh, Retsu with the Potion. If they're going to go Close Combat Pup, that gives them a little bit more sustain in the middle in tandem sure. with Close Combat, so that's great. Uh, so that may look a little bit odd off the cuff, but makes a little sense, I think, when you dig a little deeper, and that's the moveset that they go with. Now, if they go E-Speed, uh, Bone Rush, I have no idea. But... Um, Yoshi on Duraludon. I love that they switch it up every game. Gives us a different <laughs> look, no question. And, uh, of course, Ender on the Jigglypuff, soon to be Wigglytuff. Burry, Malinaki rolling in that top path. Burry probably going to try and just make sure that there's no invade shenanigans happening. Mm -hmm. Otter taking the first round of central area this time on the Vault Picks, allowing Ralts to head into the path to start this game off. Ender looking for a bit of an invade, but Burry calls it out with an immediate tackle as well as the boosted auto. Just killing Ender to back off, notably taking away the cute charm passage uh, passive for the next few seconds. Yeah, a, a great look and a good read. Uh, Galadite actually went through the central area to cut off any uh, invades from the downstairs uh, area from the bottom path here. So Dark War are really understanding that they can't let themselves get invaded early and adjusting accordingly. TTV, three players up. Otter's doing work up here, already level four, taking some of that central area farm and uh, letting themselves scale up well to make an impact. Just red buff, it seems. So a split in that area makes a lot of sense for a Pokemon with such an early evolution like Alolan Ninetales. Now Ralts can return. Lutano comes in with a blue buff. Not quite at level 5, though. I'm sure that was the game plan, but Voltage getting locked up by Zugrug means the evolution is there. Corellia is ready to battle. Galadite's going to try and get some experience, but Zaretsu getting a KO on that big-time Snorlax. Malinaki and Yoshi trying to hold it down. That's a Sing Wigglytuff coming through. That's two KOs for Retsu. They're playing super far forward. They cut off Malinaki. Are they going to get the berry? Absolutely not. Otter getting a KO, and tons of points are raining in as this CC squad is doing exactly what they queued up to do, which is lock them in place and knock them down. Oh, so much crowd control and no Blissey safeguards in sight, and a first ban is going to prevent all kinds of cleanse effects being eliminated from this game. Dark War is going to have a tough time trying to move through the swamp of crowd control that TTV is creating. Yeah, it's like marching in hummus. You ain't going yes. anywhere too quick. It's just an absolute crime scene. You know? you sing, <laughs> Ender using this thing here. I mean, it's a, come on, it makes sense. Okay. Uh, they're just Dark War shredding them. They're getting tons of birds, but they're low on HP. We know this is where like Otter likes to engage. Duraludon on the run. Ender going with the sleep to see if they can catch anybody out. Urshifu coming back through. Goes for a wicked blow, but Retsu says close combat's better. <laughs> Pushing back <laughs> in the face of Yoshi. Yoshi's down at half. Galadite's in the pocket saying, we need to get out of here, Chief. This is going negatively. Look how far up Ender's going to be 
play. Icicle Crash buys space from Voltage, but oh. TTV is absolutely collapsing on this goal zone. Nobody's gone down, and the HP bars are looking good for TTV if they want to make a run of it. Voltage can't get anywhere, 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 anywhere. They just don't know Forrest Gump. You ain't running. <laughs> they take the KO. TTV looks way strong right now. Right now, the damage uh, from the mid-range from Corellia and Ninetales is making it so hard for Yoshi to get in pl in place and get close enough to get Dragon Pulse enemy like stacks on the enemy. So those big bursts of damage aren't really too formidable when they're only landing on one or two members of the front line and the damage dealers for the side of TTV are getting away scot-free. Right now, Dark Aura is playing a split lane, giving up that bottom Reggie completely over to TTV. They knew that one was a lost cause. They got to farm up. They got to have a chance at securing the Regilecki Dragon. Dragon Pulse, one of the best secure tools in the game. Let's see if Yoshi can land yet another legendary secure. Uh, Galadai did suss out Retsu very quickly and able to buy some time, and Dark Aura able to seal up the Regilecki. So good little exchange there. Finally, Galadai goes down to Retsu uh, because of the level disparity, but they did their job. Voltage gets collapsed on, no question. Lutano heating up their level 8. No Unite move, but they're finding tons of purchase here. Malinaki gets caught with a half sing, and Indy, uh, Ender and uh, Lutano are playing very far forward, buying time for TTV to collapse on this Regilecki, keep it from hitting their goal zone. TTV in a mad dash of experience race right now. Almost everybody hitting that level 9 mark. Ender not quite there, but experience share does not care about that too much at all. Passive experience being gained for them and getting in position to seal away a blue buff. Ender knows no mercy at all. Running double slap and is going to secure uh, that Pokemon to get a blue buff stolen away. Yeah, not to mention that Ender gets their Unite move at level 8 with that Wigglytuff, so that's a great look. Sure. Close combat just punches that mouth, mouse into absolute dust. <laughs> Retsu looking for another one. They said, you want to fight, Chief? Malinaki's not about that action. They peel off. Big block by Burry buys time, but that gives all the birds over to TTV, all the experience, tons of Aos energy from all the bodies of Dark Aura left in the top path, and Ender just being an absolute menace, getting collapsed on by 4, and they just need a, a confidence boost and KO there, and that's all that was by Dark Aura. There's the Dark Aura I know and love. The absolute gangbusters. Get in there and get it done. Retsu locked up against the wall thanks to a Snorlax block. You can close combat, but you're punching. You're just shadow boxing at that point as you're sent back to respawn. Great play from Dark Aura to get a good amount of purchase around this top path, though. They're, again, they are playing so hard for this one objective, giving that bottom path completely over to TTV. Not too worried about it at all. Dark Aura finding uh, finding their flow like the days of old here, collapsing on players one on four and really <laughs> taking those quick KOs, getting some good experience. They are a little bit down on experience, but if they're fighting as a unit now, they've got a real chance. TTV scoring downstairs, Otter left alone, but Dark Aura finds the opportunity up here. Is Ender going to make the first move or is Retsu? Looks like Lutano tries to suss out Galadite, but they just Ooh. barely dodge. Burry's playing very far forward. They go for a block. Miami Knight comes out as well. Sing's trying to find it in the Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff keeps pushing forward, and they're collapsing on Retsu. Retsu gets KO'd by Galadite, but here comes the huge, the absolutely massive Lutano Unite move, catching so many players from Dark Aura, absolutely shredding their HP. Here comes Zugrog on the backside. They use their Unite move trying to f hunt down Galadite. They go for the engage. <laughs> On the high horsepower ice school crash comes through galadite on the retreat can they make it out it looks like they will burry desperately wants lutano can they get a heavy slam no lutano says i'm going to sneeze on you with some psychic power and sort that out meantime otter gets reg ice for free criminal activity that lutano gets out of there but psy shock is going to cover your tracks literally and that ends up where the snorlax is so so much damage they cannot contest with another knockout goes the direction of ttv dark aura not having out as i say that level 12 found for yoshi finally a central area clear where they do not have to worry too much i spoke too soon ender is hanging out waiting to for any bit of objectives they can steal away but mostly i am sure playing for intel at these final three minute 30 seconds Seconds. If you can steal away a big KO, it could be huge, and getting to know where they are is a good opportunity to do so. Yeah, Ender with the Sing onto the rest of the squad and trying to leash them into Otter. Otter's going to see if they can convert. <laughs> Finally, Duraludon gets a KO, but tons of damage was kind of chunked in. Burring playing forward, protecting the squad. Good look and a good way to convert and collapse on Ender. Caught in, uh, in enemy lines there, but it does open the opportunity for Zug to get in a 40 bagger. He's going to get in a 40. However, all of Dark Horror's offensive threats are headed up towards to try to get this four. Mamoswine knocked down, but the burn isn't quite there. A little bit of counter synergy with block push. Pushing them away from Malineki's Wicked Blow. Finally, they go down, but the advance out of the bottom path for TTV has found some success. Again, Dark Aura is getting some good knockouts, but the defense around TTV, a just staggering of their players, is making it too tough for Dark Aura to find any opportunities for counter scoring. 
Yeah, Malinaki's trying to find Retsu here, and Otter and Ender are going to roll up top. They've got the opportunity to take some big-time KOs in tandem if they want to. Retsu's chunked, so they can retreat if they want, but Dark Aura has too much to handle on the rest of the map. Malinaki wants Retsu in a bad way. They're going for the engage. They get the KO, a huge, huge KO there for them, and a good experience. Otter's trying to find Galadite. They kind of jump onto the retreat here as Otter's getting chunked, and here comes Yoshi. KO streak of two for Malinaki. They finally get dusted back the other way. Two players down on both sides. Lutano has the opportunity here to call collapse on Yoshi if they want to. They choose Burry. Indy's starting to find his way in, and that's a sing and a double slap. Is that going to sort it out? Sure does. Zagra coming in with their Unite move as well. Dark Aura trying to chip into them, and here is Rayquaza. One player down for Dark Aura, no one for TTV, and they're looking to posture up by 220. Voltage lands a lot of damage there, but they had no Unite move to speak of, so not able to immediately capitalize with a Pika Unite. That being said, Duraludon relatively untouched in that last team fight, level 13. The Revolving Ruin, one of the best named Unite moves in the game, does exist for the side of Dark Aura. If they can land that on top of the Rayquaza, that's going to give them a good advantage of burn. Face check of an Ice School Crash finds multiple players, sends them scattering like ants that got picked up from under a log. Without a doubt, that was a good little read by Zug and TTV playing just that patented lockdown defense. Now, we have seen the, the objective get snuffed out from under him a couple times. Big Unite move back the other way. Duraludon tries to find it after Lutani Unite chips up two players for Dark Wars, viscerates their HP. Galadite's trying to find their way in to try and get a KO, but it's... Oh my god, where did the team go? It's Retsu <laughs> coming through. They're dealing tons of damage. The whole squad is wiped. All five are down. Five pack is there. Retsu on fire. Malinaki gets a retribution KO back the other way. But it's the TTV squad that's melting this Rayquaza. And burgers are on the menu. Let's go. TTV finds them and locks them in place forever. An eternity of ice is the future of Dark Aura. Putting them on ice in this final one. An incredible push into the ray. Great little mounting of the defense, though, for Dark Aura. They're going to get some knockouts, but Otter finding a Hundo Burger on the top path and Zugrug finding another one in the home goal zone is going to make this a tough road to victory for Dark Aura. Yeah, two Hongdo burgers might be enough to quell the, to satiate the appetite here for TTV. Points are raining back the other way, but TTV does have some players to play some defense. Otter pops out of the weeds, and so does Retsu. Big Block's going to buy some time. The Thunder from the Skies is going to try and do it, too. They get 46 points in, but they were shades short of the 300 they needed. TTV going to win. Unite Mike's Mayhem, week three. But they made that scoreboard look better. <laughs> they did get some scores in the end. But you are right. TTV in a 2-0 fashion have booked their ticket to tomorrow night's event as well as winning Unite Mike's Mayhem week number three. 453 to 238. TTV win another event. Uh, back to the to the rare form of before they've picked up two phenomenal players from what we've seen in season one in Retsu and Otter Retsu a Unite Championship Series qualified player themselves without a doubt they're looking to do some work and run it back Otter uh, no no foreigner to high level play either Dark Aura still got some work to do but heck of a showing tonight taking down Radiance one of the teams that were kind of the early favorites going into this season two for North America so Dark Aura showing tons of potential here glad we got to showcase them uh, but to, this week was not your week yeah, unfortunate. Well, congratulations to TTV. Also, congratulations to Easily Done 27 in chat. They did say their wife just went into labor, so good night. Uh, if that is true, congratulations to you on your, yeah. your future child to be. But yes, congratulations, of course, to TTV, like you just mentioned. Impressive numbers across the board. Lutano not quite hitting that 100k damage marker. Shout out to the Pikachu of Voltage, someone we could count on consistently playing this one very strong. 60,000 damage on the the Pika, but seriously, Dark Aura had lots of ways to impress this week. I think the front line of Galadite and Burry is one to be feared headed into potentially Unite Mike's Mayhem season number three. That being said, Dupesex, let's bring us back on the screen. We do have a couple of housekeeping things to announce. First up, I'll mention before we uh, talk about next week, first thing, Right after this, we are going to be going to a back soon screen and then jumping into the Overdunk podcast with yep. us, Lazadin, and your champion, Ender. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things Season 2, PTS, all that good stuff. So stick around for that. Second thing, though, of course, maybe just as important, uh, tomorrow is Unite Mike's Mayhem Season 2 finale. So TTV will be playing again at this same time tomorrow, and they mm -hmm. will be joined by three champion squads.
Yeah, absolutely. Your Pokemon Unite World Champions ascended are are have punched their ticket. Uh, South America West representatives for the UCS clash and then South America East uh, aka the Beast Brazilians she's going to be there as well I mean all high like S tier caliber squads going to be banging heads tomorrow to see who's Unite Mike's Mayhem season 2 winners so check that out two more things exclamation point prize pool we're trying to gussy up the prize pool for that big time event for these big time teams uh, helps easing the financial burden on Unite Mike since we're not sponsored we're throwing all the money at this to pay these teams to participate Mm -hmm. So that helps us us tremendously. Every dime that goes in goes directly to the winning team. Last thing, emote initiative. If you sub to Unite Mics or use your Amazon Prime sub to Unite Mics, obviously you get our emotes, but we don't keep any of the money we donated at the end of each month. So know that if you subscribe to us to get our emotes, your Bezos bucks go to a good cause and we don't take anything off the top. We just uh, grip, rip, and ship that right to a good charity at the end of each month. So that's all I got. Zoinks, follow at Unite Mics on Twitter. Bang. Yep. Uh... 